Hello ladies and gentlemen, good evening if you're watching from the UK, if you're watching from across the world then good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everything that you have to say. I was not expecting to come back tonight, uh, we've done a lot of shows uh, throughout the day on uh, this channel, we gave you guys all the updates from uh, the turmoil of the current government and of course the opposition which is all over the place. Things are getting worse for Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister and um, first of all hello to everybody in the live chats uh, if you're watching this live tonight at 8 p.m on saturday the 5th of november we're going to come to you guys uh, with your uh, questions and any comments that you guys have uh, and of course if you're watching this later then unfortunately there's no live chat for you guys this is about what is uh, what's actually going on with rishi sunak's uh, cabinet and of course uh, uh, a, a very specific individual and that is gavin Williamson. Oh dear God. So for those of you who don't know Gavin Williamson, <laughs> let's let's take you through what's actually been going on over the last few years in this country. So Gavin Williamson, the man who was uh, the David Cameron's bag carrier, the parliamentary um, private secretary, he um, it was reported that Gavin Williamson was one of the reasons uh, that uh, David Cameron was pushed to resign. He was encouraged to just give it up and let uh, other people to take over. <clears throat> and of course, the plan was for everybody thought that Boris Johnson would take over in 2016. Didn't happen. Theresa May won. And somehow, Gavin Williamson came out of nowhere. He got some ministerial jobs. And some people just went down. Somehow, he became Defence Secretary. He got one of the top jobs in the cabinet. Since then, he's been sacked a number of times. He's uh, been his own downfall, Gavin Williamson himself. Somehow, he also backed Boris Johnson. You know, he came back into the cabinet again. And then he left. Now, he just appeared out of nowhere. He has joined the Rishi Sunak's government. Now, the problem here is that he was not trusted by Liz Truss and uh, that team. So what happened was uh, there was a bit of a clash over uh, Her Majesty's funeral and a number of other events as well. Apparently there was a, a, a number of examples of threatening situations, uh, intimidation from Gavin Williamson. Now, government has a chief whip. At the time, it was Wendy Morton. And by the time, at the time means a week ago, two weeks ago. Liz Truss's chief whip was um, Wendy Morton. And uh, Gavin Williamson got in touch with Wendy Morton about uh, the uh, getting a ticket to Her Majesty's funeral. This is a text message we have received. We have leaked text messages between Gavin Williamson and Wendy Morton, the chief whip. On the left-hand side, that is Gavin Williamson saying that, uh, think very poor how PCs uh, who aren't favoured have been excluded from uh, the funeral. Very poor and sent a very clear message. Wendy Morton says, that is that is not the case, Gavin. Gavin Williamson says, well, certainly it looks like it, looks them that it, which it thinks um, a very, well, I can't say the S word, and perception becomes a reality. Also, don't forget, I know how this works, so don't put me about. <laughs> then Wendy Morton says, as I said above, that's simply not the case, Gavin. The number of places allocated was extremely limited. Gavin Williamson lost his temper and saying, it's very clear how you're going to treat a number of us, which is very stupid, and you are showing F all interest in pulling things together. Don't bother asking anything from me. He continues by saying, also, this shows exactly how you have rigged it. Uh, it is disgusting. You're using her death to punish people who are just supportive. Absolutely disgusting. Wendy Morton, the chief whip, says, Gavin, again, this is not the case whatsoever. Gavin Williamson loses it again by saying, well, let's see how many more times you effed us over. Uh, there is a price for everything. Now, this is quite threatening um, because and there is a reason I say that this sort of language that Gavin Williamson has, there is a precedent for it. <laughs> um, Wendy Morton says, good morning, Gavin. This is the next day, I guess. I hear from your whip that you're probably not voting this evening. Is that a problem? We are on a three-line whip. Thanks. Gavin says, thank you for, your, for the patronizing and condescending tone. You're welcome to come and see me and explain 
best wishes. Um, I mean, pot kettle, Gavin, but okay. He says, you do know you can speak to people in your job and you don't just text them. The thing is, because he used to be chief whip and so he can, he's going to be sassy about it. Wendy Morton, the chief whip, says, there is absolutely no need for you to take this stone, Gavin. I am trying to help. Gavin Williamson says, how are you? <laughs> Wendy says, I'm fine. <laughs> Gavin Williamson says, no, how are you helping? But, the, <laughs> but very glad you are fine. Look at my voting record. Step back and think how you're dealing with people. And then maybe talk to people. Um, I am currently with my poorly dog and the vets. So I will give you some time to reflect on how you're dealing and treating people. Um, and then it goes um, to Wendy Morton, the chief whip, by saying, I need no lecture from you, Gavin. When I ask a civil question, I will call you later. So <laughs> let's just quickly go back to the moment when, <laughs> when Gavin Williamson, who is desperate to get a ticket to um, go to Her Majesty's funeral, that's the whole point of this conversation, this clash. And the chief whip, Gav um, Wendy Morton, says... We we don't have it's a limited kind of there's limited capacity, and basically she was being nice. She could have actually told him, "You were the future ones, Kevin. You are nobody right now. Nobody cares about you. We we have to give all the allocated space to all the important people." And, <laughs> but my favorite part is this bit. When <laughs> and Wendy Morton says, "There is absolutely no need for you to take this tone. Um, I'm trying to help." And Kevin Williamson means how? How are you trying to help? But he says. How are you? And she says, I'm fine. <laughs> this is the absolute state of His Majesty's conservative government. This is, the, oh my God, this is a circus. It's, it's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. So we call this the Gavin Gate. Every single time Gavin Williamson is in government or in some sort of group, he causes so much trouble, he either gets sacked or he brings the whole thing down. And which means he's probably going to be the downfall of Rishi Sunak's government. Now, it gets even more interesting. This is classic. Like, we have Endolf uh, uh, saying school playground politics. Embarrassing. I absolutely agree with you. It is really, really embarrassing. We've got so many people. Maria Murphy uh, says uh, Reform UK. We've got all these comments saying they've basically given up on the Tory government at this point. Uh, but uh, there's a new development, by the way. There is, there is a new update in case you haven't heard. So for those of you who just joined, <laughs> this whole video is about the clash between the current chief whip, Wendy, well, no, not even the current, she was chief whip until Liz Truss went. Uh, she was Liz Truss's chief whip, Wendy Morton, and Gavin Williamson, who was just an MP, uh, he's now back in government, thanks to Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt, the man who can't be trusted, uh, the man who had a, a tarantula for, as, as a pet when he was a chief whip himself, and I think it was under Theresa May that, and it was very scary. He was very intimidating. The whole clash is over him being desperate to go to the funeral of Her Majesty. This is absolutely childish. Now, the development, the latest update that we now have for you guys is this. Usually, Politics 101, when a prime minister, <laughs> when you go to a prime minister and say, one of your ministers, one of your colleagues, are in a bit of a scandal. Do you have? Do you still have full confidence in them? Usually, Brent Prime Ministers say, I have full confidence in Gavin Williamson. That means they're gone by next week. When they don't even bother saying that, you're in trouble. This is what happened tonight. Number 10 will not say if the Prime Minister still has confidence in Gavin Williamson, who is a minister without portfolio, which is completely pointless. They just Get, make him a minister, give him a lot of taxpayers' money for no reason. This happened after the leaking of abusive and threatening messages sent to the former chief whip Wendy Morton by Gavin Williamson. <laughs> so Downing Street and Rishi Sunak, they don't even bother with going with that rhetoric of, oh, the prime minister has full confidence, but they're going to get rid of him next week. So this means he is probably gone by Monday morning. <laughs> Unless they're, again... He could easily survive. Do you know how he can survive? Because it's Gavin Williamson. Now, Gavin Williamson has this superpower. He has, well, allegedly, allegedly, when he was um, Chief Whip himself, he had a bit of a tiny black book. 
And there were speculation, again, allegedly, I do not have the evidence, it has been denied. But they were saying that th there might be a book, tiny little book, with a list of names and things that could be used against them. So <laughs> so that's exactly how he kept getting all these top jobs, maybe. Uh, but uh, this is why he, may, he might just survive, because he might just go to Rishi Sunak and say, Dear Rishi, do you really want to fire me? I think that would be a very, very bad idea, Prime Minister. That would be a very courageous decision, Prime Minister. Um, someone actually end, end up again says, uh, same as Gove. There are similarities between Gavin Williamson and Michael Gove. Uh, Joe Keane says, a cat with nine lives. And to be fair, he's uh, used up seven of his lives. So he's got two left. We'll see how uh, it happens. Um, we have... Uh, Miami Rose saying that the more they push their agenda, the more they uh, their own weight will sink them. They, that is absolutely spot on, by the way, because you know, the, the more they try to make more chaotic situations, they will be their own downfall. We don't have to do anything. Starmer doesn't have to do anything. The sad thing is, if they go down, Starmer will bin. <laughs> Unless a big chunk of Tory voters all go behind Reform UK, which is unlikely. Otherwise, Starmer will be the next prime minister. Angela says, Canadian here who really enjoys your content. Hello all. Hello, dear Canadian. Oh, Canada. Um, so, <laughs> um, Mark says Cummings knew. Uh, so, for those of you who just joined, in case you don't know, we are going to go to um, uh, on Twitter as well to kind of find out what's exactly uh, going on. JW says, what's all this got to do with our day-to-day -day lives? Thank God someone said it. This is the whole point, by the way, because on the one hand, there is a circus in Westminster, and, and the Westminster hacks are loving it as well. They love the Westminster gossip instead of focusing on the real issues. On the other hand, it's Saturday evening, so I don't really expect them to focus on cost of living crisis, right? So technically, when these sort of scandals and gossip and rumors come out, it's a perfect time, Saturday evening, to be exposed, because we also need to see their true side. One thing is about scrutinizing incompetent policies, one thing is about character and values. And, I, and ideally, on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m., I, I want to focus on the policies. I want Westminster to focus on policies, all of us, all of you guys. But now that we have time, now that we're taking a break from parliamentary sessions, it's a perfect time to also expose these idiots and their hypocrisy and their problems and their own incompetence when it comes to lack of values and lack of character, civility. So it's probably a good idea for all this to come out but again the issue is as jw says why are we even a uh, focusing on these sort of issues and uh, why uh, the westminster bubble why are they even talking about this instead of the real problems because the focus should really be on um fixing the cost of living crisis there william says why couldn't w and williamson um is that quit? I think. Oh, Q. Why couldn't Williamson Q like everyone else? Well, though, this is actually about um, the actual funeral, not the Q. Uh, but again, Williams' um, comment stands still because he could have just gone to the crowd. There were a lot of ordinary people out there outside the, the cathedral and um, everything was fine. If you really wanted to, if, if, we, if with Gavin Williamson, the whole funeral was simply about paying respect, be like normal people. Just go outside on the street and show your respect and tribute. But no, of course not. It's all about status. It's all about the game. And this is the problem. Uh, Joe says, none of them have good character, Maya. Magyar. And I, I don't blame this. There's an autocorrect with my name, unfortunately. Every time someone types Maya, it comes up at Magyar. Uh, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, okay, let's see. Alan says, Farage, reform all the same uh, out for their own interest. Well, that's the that's, well, to be fair. Politics is that, unfortunately. There is um, the priority for politics and politicians and parties is to secure their own platform first. So that's why I'm not in party politics. So <laughs> I'd rather be free. Uh, there's a number of other issues that, that obviously we ideally want to talk about, which will be quite difficult at this point. Uh, let's uh, double check the the world of Twitter now that Twitter is becoming free again from the shackles of the lunatics of the liberal left of uh, Silicon Valley. And yeah, so the latest that we have is essentially the same as I said. Um, Downing Street have come out to say that uh, 
well, they, they're not going to confirm if the Prime Minister still has confidence in Gavin Williamson as Minister Without Portfolio, which, again, I'm, I get so angry every time I hear that. Uh, why do we have that role? It's simply for people like Gavin Williamson or like the Michael Gove type, still similarly, as I said, to just have a role, to keep him inside the tent so that they don't cause trouble from the outside. But that's not how you do governance. You, this is literally, I think this is the, one of the largest cabinets that we have in history. And it's, it's taxpayers' money that's been wasted on these ministers, left, right and centre. What are they actually doing? We have a border crisis and we have a, we have a Home Secretary that wants to do something. They're blocking Suella Bradman. They've taken, over, they've taken uh, her powers away from her to give to Jeremy Hunt, who's supposed to be Chancellor, but is now running the rest of government. We don't know what Rishi Sunak is actually up to. We haven't even seen him now, apart from like waving outside number 10 door for 57 seconds for no reason, like a robot. And it's probably time for the next prime minister, as uh, Jeff G says, Greta for the next PM, please. <laughs> People are losing patience. Just bring on Greta Thunberg. <laughs> it can't get any worse, can it? Um, it is really, really embarrassing. Uh, okay, let's see what we have here. Graham, Graham says, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how many lies and U-turns, come an election, there is still too many idiots that will vote Tory, Labour, Lib Dem and SNP. This is the, 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 the way the system obviously works is based on, um, well, parties in order to get support. You've got the guerrilla campaigns so on the ground. Lib Dems are good at that. Lib Dems are not good at national campaigns, but they're good on the ground. But you also need the resources and the funding to be able to promote your party and your agenda. And that is not just election time. Smaller parties, what they do is they gather all the money that they have, all the resources, and they spend it during the election time. Whereas what bigger parties do in terms of propaganda and everything else, they do promotional campaign stuff. They do it every day for five years, even outside the campaign um, election campaign periods. So that's one thing. And also, you also need to have uh, some good friends in the media. And this is not some sort of plotty thing. It's simply about having a couple of good friends who are producers, for example, on you know certain TV channels to make sure to pull and um, to plug your party leader and your candidates. So whether you're Reform UK, uh, whether you're SDP, whether you're UKIP, you need to have someone to get you on these channels on a regular basis. And that's how Nigel Farage managed to get bigger and bigger as UKIP leader. Uh, because, you know, his character and his personality became attractive enough for the media to keep, keep inviting him. They invited him because they thought they could make fun of him. But it kind of backfired because he was charismatic as a UKIP leader. And he just became bigger and bigger. That's how UKIP managed to get, what, three to five million votes in 2015. So it's difficult for smaller parties, as Graham said. People, a lot of normal people out there who are not even following the news, who are just too busy with their own lives, they've got all the problems. Um, the problem here is that they're not going to know who, who Richard Tice is, they're not going to know what Reform UK is, but they know the logo of the Tory party, they know the logo of the Labour party, they know the colours. They don't even, even if they don't care about Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer, so by default, they'll just go to the ballot paper and say, OK, who have I heard from this campaign? Who knocked on my door? Oh, the Labour candidate did. Uh, and if they're angry with the Tories, they will just go with Labour because they think that's just the opposite of the Tory party. They would not consider Reform UK or SDP or UKIP or any other party for that matter. So it's quite difficult uh, in terms of getting uh, the support. But if the smaller parties who are generally on the centre right get together and pull together all the support and all the funding, all the resources, then there is absolutely a possibility going forward to um, go break that ceiling and also you need a couple of good superstars again i know it makes no sense because people say well p politics celebrities what are you talking about not really celebrities in that sense but you need some good household names to join a new party so whether unless like sdp and ukip and all the other parties want to all join reform uk because they, they're slightly bigger or if you want to create a new party you kind of need a few good household names, maybe a couple of defections from the Tories and a couple of others from good ones from the other parties, just like what the Brexit party did. That's how they did it. You know, it, it, you have to you have to make it sexy, whether you like it or not. If you want to get the attention when it comes to media and PR, you have to make your party sexy. Let's see. 
Uh, Milliwick says, uh, looks like he doesn't have a Sunak for his uh, prime, for this prime minister thing. Um, and also, there's, there's a discussion I missed, actually. Um, what do we have? Um, Endolf says, uh, as Maya Tusi just said, it was Farage who was entertaining enough for the media to mention UKIP. Yes, whether we like it or not. But we don't have to copy and paste the same method. You don't need to find the next Nigel, like the, at least the UKIP Nigel. We just need to find um, more effective ways to um, get more attention from the media. Uh, Band again, I love the username, says reform has candidates ready in every seat right now. So I believe I, I was talking to Richard Tice, they have just over 500 candidates. They, they, they need a few more to get to the 660, whatever it is. Uh, but they are basically, the Reform UK as a party, they are getting uh, ready. Um, and uh, But again, you kind of still need a few good household names. You kind of need, it's not just about policy programs. Richard Tice has come out and, and presented so many good good policy programs in how to fix uh, the energy crisis, how to fix the, uh, the, the, the budget crisis. He's got the ideas, but that's not enough. It's never enough in politics. You need um, you know, some sexy people with great hair to join your party. <laughs> that was not an indication. I'm not joining parties right now. I'm just having, I'm loving my life right now. I mean, just <laughs> uh, criticizing the establishment. Uh, GB News is full of Reform Party presenters, uh, but again, then they're not. You know, if anybody goes on there, it's not with the hat of Reform UK. That's the thing. You kind of need people to be guests on TV and radio stations uh, to get the attention. So let's quickly go. Um, just a quick recap, because uh, I, I know it's a live stream, so people joining late. Uh, let's just quickly go through this in case you know. I'll, I'll make it faster. But there was a bit of a clash uh, between the former Chief Whip. Uh, Liz Truss's chief whip, Wendy Morton, and Gavin Williamson. Yes, the snake of Westminster. Uh, he was desperate to go to Her, Her Majesty's funeral, and he he was a nobody at the at the time. And so he was going to when um, chief, the chief whip, Wendy Morton, saying, "I I want I want a ticket. I want a ticket. I want to go. I really want to go." And then he decides to threaten her and be rude to her. And it was supposed to be the job of the chief whip to be scary, not Gavin Williamson. And so there's, there's the leaked uh, text messages that we have between, on the left is Gavin Williamson, on the right is Wendy Morton. Basically, it's just a recap, you can pause it and watch it, because obviously the majority of people already listened to my rant. Uh, he's complaining about not getting a ticket, uh, and uh, Wendy says that's not really the case. The number of uh, places allocated were extremely limited, and he just starts being rude to the chief whip, and uh, yeah, he just completely <laughs> loses his mind over this tiny, tiny, trivial issue, playground stuff. And then the next day, um, Wendy Morton said, uh, Morning, Gavin. I hear from your whip that you're probably not voting this evening. Is there a problem? We are on a three-line whip. And then he loses patience again, saying, Thank you for being patronizing and condescending. That's not really good. He also threatens her by saying there's a price for everything, which is quite fascinating. And this, this is the best bit, where she says, There's absolutely no need for you to take this tone, Gavin. I'm trying to help. And he says, how are you trying to help? But he says, how are you? So she says, I'm fine. <laughs> he says, no, I'm saying, how are you trying to help? <laughs> I, this is literally the best part of that text conversation. How are you trying to help? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? How, how are the children? How's the wife? <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, but yes, absolutely embarrassing playground stuff, uh, childish Westminster gossip, kids. Um, but the whole point of this is that now, the government and Rishi Sunak and his leadership are in turmoil over this on a Saturday evening. It's Saturday, 5th of November. The remember, remember, the 5th of November. And Gavin Williamson is once again bringing down the government with him, like Titanic. Also, I just realized it's 5th of November. I could have done a special program on uh, the 5th of November. Maybe we could just turn this live stream going forward for the next 10 minutes into talking about uh, Guy Fawkes. Why not? And the movie V for Vendetta. Because I think it's time for a revolution. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gathering the troops to go attack the Houses of Parliament. Um, but now, yeah, the latest is that uh, the number 10 have come out to say they will not say if the Prime Minister still has confidence in Gavin Williamson. So Gavin might be going any moment. But again, the problem here is that when he goes down, he usually takes you down with him. So maybe Gavin Williamson could 
indirectly and unintentionally be our saviour by bringing down Rishi Sunak with him. We will see. Uh, right, so what else we have? Let's just double check uh, the latest on Twitter in case I miss some breaking news again, as usual. I get too distracted with my rants that um, sometimes I don't know which prime minister has resigned, which prime minister is coming back in. And I swear last time it was a, and I was doing this live stream when people were resigning every two minutes from the cabinet and I kept missing everything. Um, but we were still, we still somehow managed to be on top of it quicker than the mainstream media. I was still announcing things before the mainstream media. So it's all thanks to you guys because you guys kept sending me messages uh, and in the live chat really helped. Uh, right. It is Saturday evening. I think uh, it's probably best uh, for me to let you guys go and rest and uh, have a good evening with your uh, families and your friends and uh, cats and dogs and whatever you have. Um, but uh, we're going to come back tomorrow with a number of uh, news updates. One of them is um, about um, Tony Blair and John Major, the chief Ramonas, who are having a meltdown over a fictional TV show, Netflix's Crown. So we're going to talk about that properly tomorrow. But for now, thank you so much for all the support. Thank you so much to everybody in the live chat for your contributions. We're going to do these live streams again more often. If you're new to the channel, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Amaya Tusi and we are the media.